Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. Here's a short video to give you some tips on how to track changes in Smartsheet, ranging from the first basic ones to more advanced ones. So let's have a look. So first thing is, I'm going to go into my setup, and what you can see is I've got a sheet, and it's telling me last updated three minutes ago. Well, there's a little simple change. But let's dive in and look at a sheet itself. Now the first thing in this sheet is, I go in and it's what I expected. But what I want to see is actually the changes that are happening in the sheet. So I'm going to turn on highlight changes. So you do this, there's a little button here so it looks like a pen with a highlighter and it's highlight changes. So on here it's off, but again it's one of the first things I always turn on on the sheet. You turn it on and the default I always like to go for is since I last viewed the sheet, which means I'll see the things since I was last in there. However, if obviously you've made these changes, then I'm going to change that to be in the last hour. And what you can start seeing is these are changes made in the last hour. If I go back, these are overall changes made today. Well, everything's changed on that sheet today, so that's not so useful. Okay, so last hour, these are the changes that have been made. So that's useful in terms of knowing that some changes have been made on the sheet. So I'm going to leave that on for the time being, and I'm just going to turn this off back to being since I last viewed the sheet, which is the one I most often use. So if I now go to this one here, I'm now going to right click on the cell and you can see this one here which says view cell history. I can click on that and you can see that Alejandra Rojas went in and she made a change at this time here, 1753, made a change to that cell and changed it from 637 to 630. So that's what it is now. So just looking at individual cell, I can see that information. So that's handy if I know which cells to look at and why is it changed, who made that change, etc. Clearly if a change hasn't been made, not much use. Now, so the next one then is if you click on file, this one becomes really useful because you can see what's called the activity log. So the activity log, if I open up this, this is gonna show me all the changes that we made by who in the sheet from a date range. The important bit to note here is this goes back up to 90 days, but not beyond. So if you're concerned about having a revision history for audit purposes, etc., then you need to do something more robust, for example, and I'll show you in a moment what you can do there. So if I change the date back, you know, I so I can take it back to whatever it wants it to be. But again, you can set this, it will default to a week period um, on that piece. So you set that time frame. if it's 90 days, but when you've got that, this, all you can do is you can click on and download it and it will download a zip file, the CSV um, export, and it'll come to me on that piece. So I download that and I've got the information there. That becomes really useful. If you are having to keep a record of any changes to the file, which is greater than 90 days, for example, then you'll need to set yourself up a trigger to remind yourself to do this download on whatever frequency is going to be a fail safe for your requirements. So again, this is a great way, if you want to see what changes have been made and a history of that bit, then you've got that there. So I'm gonna close that out. Now, what's powerful within here is I can see, well, who's made changes by, by who? So if I wanna go and see you know, Alejandra, what changes has Alejandra made into the sheet here? So now I'm just gonna apply and it's gonna show me all the changes made by Alejandra. If I wanna see the changes made by someone else, for example, I spotted that Seb had made some changes, what changes has he made? Okay. So Seb's gone in, he made changes, he, okay, he's gone in and changed that one to not started to in progress. Okay, that's useful information. Um, cells changed, what else did he make? And he changed, oh, that's interesting, he changed the time of that one from 12.11 to 12.17, for example. So you go back on this bit, and this way then you can see either specific items, and I'm gonna clear the filters here, or again, you can see and you can get it to filter by different types of things here in terms of either the sheet content, collaboration, or settings and properties um, on that side. So that's kind of the next piece in terms of seeing information. Again, really useful because if you wanna go back and see what changed, you can see all the items that have changed within that piece. And, and again, if you download a file and someone's made changes, deleted um, something, you can go back in and see what was deleted and all those various pieces here. So coming out of this one, therefore, I'm just gonna close that. So the next bit I'll go to are alerts. So on this bit, I've got a couple of alerts set up already here. I'm just gonna go into them. So let's just go through some various ones. Firstly, I've 
I've done one which on a previous video is alerts when a row is deleted. Well, that's a change, but you're not going to be able to see what the change is. But again, it's pretty useful that alerts someone when a row is deleted. Well, that's a change I want to know about. Um, albeit, it doesn't tell you actually what was deleted on that piece, so you need to go and unpick. Again, I've done a separate video on that one. But come out of this one. But change anything changed alerts? Well, absolutely. Here you go. An alert is sent when the following changes occur. So you know, rows added, sheets, comments, 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 the sheets are shared. Okay, and you can run that now. If you have that on when triggered, you're gonna go mad. Um, hourly, daily, weekly, etc. So again, you'll get an alert and you get a full blown um, automation which comes through with all that information about everything that's changed in that sheet. And I'll be pretty extensive if you've got a lot of people. And again, who does that message go to? And you customize it like all your alerts as well. So we won't go into that detail. Okay. So a couple of other things which I've got here is if a status changes. So this one, again, can be useful as well. So if we go back to the sheet, when rows are changed and the status changes to any value, then alert people. So something which I use a lot is actually if I change the, prog the status changes to complete, for example, I want to know when a job's being completed, for example. So that's kind of a good piece of, right, the job's been completed, right, go and take action. Or if you've got people waiting in a process that when something becomes available, they get alerted. Well, when the, pro when the status changes from not available to available, boom, then, then that happens. And again, so you can know when someone's gone in and changed it and you'll be alerted about that bit. You can go to the sheet and see. So coming out of that one, so then two other ones which I've just got here is you can actually get it to record a date in a cell. So I've got here date completed and date started. So let's go back to the sheet and just show you this um, as an example. So what I was just showing you before is when something is in progress and I change that to be completed, I can actually get that to trigger an alert. By the way, you can see it's gone yellow because it's highlighting changes I've made on the sheet here. So one, it's showing the change there but I've marked it as complete. What I want to do in this case is one, when I change that, it will send an alert as you've just seen, but actually I want it to record the date when completed. So by doing that, if I now press save, what it's gonna do is gonna run a workflow in the background and so that will be coming up. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to encourage that workflow to trigger. Oh, too soon, but you saw it just come up on the screen. There we go. And now that has triggered and it's recorded the date. So I've got exactly the same workflow happening for not started. So if I change this one from not started to in progress, again, save that again, and that will trigger in the background and it'll update the date here. Why is this useful? If you've got a process workflow and you want to understand what the length of time it takes for each step in the process to happen, you can set up multiple columns to say, well, when did it start? When was it completed? When did it move to the next step and the next step? So what you've got, it doesn't timestamp, but what you do have is a day piece here. So if you've got a process which goes through various steps, you can see the time it took between step one and step two, or between step two and step five, if you've got multiple columns here. So then that's when you add in a formula to say, well, how long was it from start to finish, for example? And again, if you've got start and finish date, you've got that here, but on the various items. So this gives you an audit trail to see things. So again, another tip in terms of how you might be able to see when things have changed on a sheet and then that would be an alert of who's done it. Now the last one, again, is a fairly obvious one here, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to insert a automation. So, and that's also, um, the column is I'm gonna add it to the right and I'm also just gonna add in modified date. So it's gonna add in the date when it was last modified and I'm gonna add in separately column to the right, which was modified by. So if I do those two columns now, oops, I said, don't know, I did the wrong button there, why? If I now save, I do it here, now what you can see is who's made those changes and when were they made. So you do have a timestamp in terms of when the sheet was modified, but that will change every time the sheet changes. So let's just go through and I'm gonna save again. And the reason why I'll save is because it's yellow in terms of highlighting the text, if I now refresh it, it will get rid of that for me now, which is much more useful in terms of looking at it. Now, in this one, you can see that it was last changed, modified by Alejandra, and that was the date on that pit. If I now change anything here, 
What I'm going to do is mark it in progress and save that. You can see now that it's recorded the date here and Demo Productive has done it. So that's fine. The challenge here is that I will then lose that date though. So if, for example, on the following day that I've gone through and made that change, let's just, um, just looking around at the sheet. So all these have been modified today, but had, if that date was a previous date and I go and make a change and say, well, it's now complete, for example, and I'm gonna mark it as complete and save it there. If that's marked as complete now, this will be overwritten. So the modified column is great in terms of understanding when any changes were made anywhere on this sheet, sorry, wrong, on the row, it will show you that change. You lose it though, if you want to keep the data for a specific cell. That's when you add in these extra columns here to help you know how long or when did it change to a particular step or stage in your process. So again, going from the basic to the more advanced, here are some demonstrations to see how you can actually track some changes in Smartsheet. Trust that's been useful and plenty more tips to follow. Bye for now.